Hello friends, Amanda here back with another movie review discussion, whatever, and I'm here to ask you what does Willem Dafoe farting, unnecessary sequels, and the best movie of the year all have in common? Nothing specifically other than the fact that they're all being discussed in this video right now. Two of the movies that I'm mentioning in this would warrant entire full videos, and at some point I probably will do entire videos, but I know they're gonna have more limited releases in certain areas, and one of them I really just don't want to say anything about it, I just want people to see it, and the other one I am just gonna wait until I think it gets its home release before I kind of do one of my deep, kind of a little bit more, not behind the scenes, but I know a lot of the information that went into making this movie, and I think it's really interesting, but we'll get into that. And then the first one we're going to be talking about is the new Zombieland, because I've had a few people asking me for my review and my thoughts on Zombieland. You know, immediately after getting out of it, I think the, the first thing I tweeted was, you know, Zombieland double tap was fun enough, but Little Monsters is still the king of zombie movies of 2019. Not just zombie comedies, zombie movies of 2019. So my basic thoughts here is that while it was enjoyable to watch, it 100% did not need to happen. And the plot was really bad. It was really lazy. Like it just really feels like no effort was put into it. And they just thought, well, if we get everybody from the original back, it's just gonna work, which to an extent it does. It's still enjoyable. There's some nice moments, but it really fails to capture that same magic that the, the original Zombieland did in 20, 2009. Not even a 20, it was a 2000. And I remember that when I first saw Zombieland, I hated zombies just entirely. And my friends Jeff and Caitlin were just like, no, please like, just come over, give it a go. You'll probably really like it. And I did, I fell in love with it. I thought it was really fresh and fun in its delivery. I had a great time with it. And uh, like a sequel would have been really nice had they actually taken the care to care about it. So instead of ending up with something that could have been really good, it just felt like they were trying to replicate that magic that they got in the original without putting in any new effort. So again, if you're looking for a good zombie movie or a zombie comedy or any kind of like horror comedy movie, I would just urge you to check out Little Monsters by Abe Forsyth. It should be on Hulu in the United States right now and releasing periodically over the course of the next month across the rest of the world. So keep it on your radar. It was super fun and I highly recommend it. And now we're gonna talk about The Lighthouse, which is the new movie that has started releasing this past week, going into this week, starring Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe, directed and written by Robert Eggers, who you guys might be familiar with from his first movie, The Vivitch. I realize it's The Witch, I like to call it The Vivitch. And I remember when I saw the trailers for this movie, I was like, I'm either gonna love it or I'm gonna hate it. And somehow after watching it, I, I still don't know how to feel. There's so much that I loved and so much that I'm like, I feel uncomfortable, which is kind of the point with him. If you guys are familiar with his work, I think you know how he makes his movies, but I don't really think that anything can prepare you for this. The main takeaways with him as a director is that he really loves these old folk tales and actually goes through great care of actually doing the research for these folk tales. So when you have something like The Vivitch that does get more of that like supernatural essence to it, then you kind of have The Lighthouse where it does become way more of a psychological thing in my opinion, where there are all these old amazing folklores from old sea tales and sea shanties, but the movie kind of puts you, the viewer, through the the exact stages that the characters are going for where you start not knowing what's real and what's fake. So for this one in particular, they were looking up a lot of old ledgers to get the dialect right and just old stories from sailors and lighthouse keepers. And this movie is actually heavily influenced by a story of two lighthouse keepers that both had the name Thomas. Down the road, I definitely wanna make a bigger video about this movie where I kind of go through some of those older fables and how it tied into this and how it kind of like played through to the creation of this movie. But I think I'm gonna wait until it hits its home release just so more people have the chance to watch it before I dive into the spoilers of this movie. And what I mentioned about the dialect is going to make it hard for some people to watch or understand. I know that as you're watching it, it definitely gets easier, but like the first time words come out of Willem Dafoe's mouth, you're just gonna be like, excuse me, what? What? I know if people saw it at the uh, con festival, it did have subtitles attached to it, which apparently definitely helped. At TIFF, it did not have subtitles. And obviously I don't believe the theatrical release is going to have subtitles, but you should still be okay. It's just kind of a warning out there that if you're somebody who English might not be your first language, you might want to wait until you can watch this at home with subtitles so that you can kind of actually fully pick up what's being said. So the performances themselves were absolutely amazing and it really makes you feel like you're trapped on the rock with the characters. It probably doesn't 
help that this movie was filmed really close to where I grew up and we had the same climate and the same weather and have to deal with the same nor'easters that were happening while they were filming this movie. And it reminded me of how quick winter's coming and how bad the weather's gonna be and how horrible I'm gonna feel, but I digress. The story itself follows two lighthouse keepers that are about to start their two week post. And the movie just starts off with these two blaring siren-like horns that are just gonna repeat throughout various stages of, of the movie. And it's just, it's uncomfortable, it's overwhelming as a feeling when you're hearing this music and it just it really just starts setting the tone of this is going to be a situation that you can't escape from. There's an immediate tension between the two characters with Defoe being like the seasoned lighthouse keeper and Pattinson being like the new guy. He's never really done it before. There's that power dynamic of Pattinson having to do literally every crappy job and Defoe just being the person who's in charge of actually watching the lighthouse and that tension surrounding the mystery and the mystique of the lighthouse just carries throughout the entire film. So those tensions just keep building and building over the course of the movie as things get worse and worse. And what's real and what's fake start to blend together due to the effects of the isolations, both for the characters and for the viewer. Myth-wise, there's a lot of really cool stuff involving a seagull that I kind of wish they had gone a little bit deeper in, but again, it's kind of the point where you, you're left in a situation where you're left wondering if all these bad things are happening because of these old tales and myths, or is it just horrible luck? So I was actually lucky enough to catch this with full line of sight on Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. So like I could actually notice when Pattinson was like tensing up. So I knew when some super messed up stuff was gonna start happening cause he would just start kind of like tensing in his seat or making awkward faces. So I was like, damn, which I can't tell if it made it better or worse, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. So yeah, this movie is wild. It's funny. It's uncomfortable. It's artsy. It's weird. And it's gonna make you feel like you're going crazy right along with them. Again, at the end of the day, I'm left with the exact same thoughts I had from the trailers. Some of you are going to love this movie. Some of you are going to hate this movie and some of you are really going to appreciate what was done here but still probably never want to watch it again Bob. what I was kind of left somewhere in between, but now that I'm seeing that it's actually playing in my theater, even though for some reason we haven't got JoJo yet and we're definitely not going to get Parasite, but we're getting this, I think I'm going to see it again this weekend. You know, I'm going to take some more notes. I got some notes here and uh, we're going to we're gonna go deep on this uh, in the future. So the one thing I'll leave you with is though I walked out of this not knowing how to really fully feel about it, beyond knowing that it was made incredibly well and that the care that had gone into it, its execution was incredible, I'm still thinking about this movie and it's been like a month and a half since I've seen it. So even though it didn't hit me as well as it hit some of the other people that I know who saw it. It is my favorite film of the year so far and I don't really expect anything else to beat it. This is my favorite film of the year so far. It's left an impact. So now we're getting down to Parasite. So this is the movie that I want everyone to see. This is currently my number one of the year. It's kind of neck and neck with Portrait of a Lady on Fire, but I do think that this movie is more accessible and that more people are going to enjoy this movie. So again, I want everybody to see it, but I don't want to say a damn thing about it. I don't want people watching trailers. I don't want people looking up plot points. I don't want people doing anything with this movie except just going and watching it. I know before I saw it, the only thing I had done was look at a poster. I immediately thought it was like a straight up horror movie. But then when I went to just mention it to somebody and I looked it up, it had like, you know, mystery, drama, and some other stuff thrown in there. And I was like, hmm, what is this movie? And the answer is, everything. This movie is everything. It's fantastic. So honestly, if you're down to just trust me and the hundreds of other people that have said this is amazing, including the fact that it won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Festival, just click off this video and watch it. But maybe actually click to this point in the video for when I'm doing my conclusion. Just click here so that YouTube thinks that you like this video. If you did like this video, you could also leave a like on the video if you want to do that. But yeah, just click ahead to this point and maybe just watch my conclusion. So, you know, the YouTube guys are appeased and the watch time analytics are appeased. But if you just want to trust me on this movie, just go watch it. But if you're someone who's just not completely sold on being told just to go watch something, especially if like foreign films aren't usually your thing, I'm going to give you a little taste of Parasite and tell you that no matter what I'm saying about it, 
it will not live up to what it actually is. So Parasite is a movie by acclaimed director Bong Joon-ho, and I truly believe that this is his greatest work. He has done a lot of stuff that's been acclaimed both in English language and in his native Korean, but Parasite really kicks it to the next level. The story is essentially about a very poor family weaving its way into the life of a rich family and all of the insanity that happens as a result of this. I think one of the best ways I've heard this described is that it ultimately ends up being a way better, more cohesive version of what Jordan Peele was trying to establish in Us. Us ended up having a lot of subjective moments and things that if you thought about it too hard, it didn't make sense. Parasite just deals in the literal, and that's what makes it so amazing. So as I mentioned, the movie manages to weave through a variety of genres seamlessly, much like real life. Like it's very rare for somebody to just live a life where you can be like, oh yeah, that person, their life's a comedy. It's a comedy. It might seem like that sometimes, but for the most part, our days are compartmentalized of a lot of different emotions, a lot of different feelings, and a lot of different things happen. So immediately it's gonna feel like a unique comedy heist focusing on social issues, but in a really unique way. I know sometimes people hear like, oh, Oh my God, social issues, class issues, ugh. But it's so good and real that it's not gonna feel overbearing in that way that I know a lot of you are thinking it is. So you kind of kick off with this and it's just super enjoyable, but it'll quickly start tossing in elements of drama and thrillers and horrors and somehow it all comes together and works. And for the sheer amount of themes being juggled in this movie, it's still super accessible to a general audience. It's not something that's like, oh, this feels too smart for me to enjoy it. Like the lighthouse is probably gonna come across to a lot of people. The only thing that makes this inaccessible is that some people refuse to read subtitles and I'm urging you to just please get over that. Everyone I know who saw this had such an amazing time watching it and I am positive that you will too if you actually give it a shot. So again, that is Parasite by Bong Joon-ho. Loved it. So yeah, that's gonna do it for my quick little reviews here of those three movies. If you do end up wanting more detailed accounts on any of these, I might end up doing it. I am dying to talk more about Parasite, but again, I know some of you guys can't help yourself, and even if I say this is spoilers for the people who have seen it so we can have a deeper discussion about things, y'all are gonna watch it, y'all are gonna push through to the end and, and want to know all the spoilers, but you know, Bong Joon-ho himself before the movie started said, please, can you not share parts of the second act of this movie, and I'm going to honor that at least until the movie's available, like, at home, wide, around the world, so that you can rent it or buy it and watch it however you want, I'm gonna honor that. But I do want to do a deeper dive on The Lighthouse and some of the folklore and tales that went into it. Let me know if that's something you might be interested in. But yeah, as always, guys, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'll catch you all later.